Lanny Davis, the lawyer for Michael Cohen, had been making the rounds saying that his client, who's now pleaded guilty, has more information about Donald Trump that could interest Robert Mueller's prosecutors. His role became highly controversial after CNN went with a story that Cohen knows the president had advanced knowledge of that Trump Tower meeting with a Russian lawyer offering dirt on Hillary Clinton, which Davis now flatly denies. So Michael Cohen does not have information that President Trump knew about the Trump Tower meeting with the Russians beforehand or even No, after. does not. And joining me now is Lanny Davis, the veteran lawyer who represents Michael Cohen. His book, The Unmaking of the President, 2016, comes out in paperback next week with a new afterword. So you've had a rough week, which we'll get to in just a second. In this afterword to the book, you say Rudy Giuliani has openly admitted his purpose is to appeal to the Trump base, undermine Mueller's credibility, and get ready for an impeachment battle. He said it on this program. He says, I'm fighting a battle in the court of public opinion. And when I was covering the Clinton impeachment 20 years ago, that's exactly what you and your allies tried to do to Ken Starr. And it looks like we were successful in molding public opinion and certainly in the November elections of 2000, of 1998. So how do you criticize Rudy for using similar tactics? Um, I don't criticize him for using tactics if his concern is about impeachment. I say that they're not successful because we were talking about a subject that most people had forgiven President Clinton about, which is personal indiscretion. This is about a unanimous verdict of the intelligence community that President Trump has denied that there was an effort by the Kremlin to influence the American people to vote for Donald Trump, and he's denied that. And Rudy Giuliani could focus on the evidence of collusion or lack of evidence, but instead he's making personal attacks on Mueller. And the late Senator John McCain reminded me that attacking the motives of Mr. Starr was a mistake. And from that moment that he told me not to do that, I followed that. Advice. Yeah, you say in the book, I have my regrets about too many attacks on Starr's motives. All right. Yes. So you've turned down a whole lot of invitations just to appear on this program. We appreciate it. You've said, and you've told me that you made a mistake in your dealings with CNN. Where did you go wrong? First, I want to say I respect CNN. I've known Jeff Zucker for many years. I certainly respect, revere the role that Carl Bernstein played in Watergate and mm -hmm. respect him as a journalist and mm -hmm. Jim Shudo. I took this responsibility because I was unsure about the issue of the Trump Tower meeting. And I thought that there were other people that could have been in the room and that it was up to journalists to go look at that. Well, let's, let's stop right there. Did you ever confirm to CNN reporters this allegation about the Trump Tower meeting off the record? I was never sure in my confirmation. I was uncertain. And in fact, I expressed my uncertainty, but not clear enough. So I can understand that they interpreted what I said as a confirmation and have not blamed CNN. I have blamed myself for not being more clear that in my mind, I did not know the details about that meeting, and I should not have encouraged any reporter. It's the lesson that I've learned. If I'm not certain, even on background, I should not be asking reporters to do investigative work when I'm not sure. Does it bother you that some of the reports have sort of conflated a lot of this and say, well, Lenny Davis confirmed that there was advanced knowledge by the president of this meeting and then backed off and recanted? You say you never... Well, it does bother me because recanting isn't easy, and I disclose myself as a source seeking reporters to confirm something that I wasn't sure about, and I was very unclear in that. So, yes, but I thought it was important not to blame CNN, not to blame anyone other than myself. I even wrote a book about taking responsibility, so this hasn't been an easy week for me. But I do think for everybody who deals with the media in my position, this is a, a lesson, maybe a teaching moment. Don't even float stories on background, which is our expression for anonymously, unless you have a certainty of the facts and you're asking reporters to go look to confirm those facts. Lenny, you've also drawn from flack uh, for an interview with Anderson Cooper in which you said, you appeared to say that you were not a source for CNN. Was that untrue? So in my mind, again, I uh, apologized uh, for saying something that was not intentionally misleading sentence, but in my mind, I wasn't sure of that story that was published, so I didn't think of myself as a source for that story. 
But I left that impression, and I am very sorry I didn't explain myself better to Anderson Cooper. I have really no excuse other than it was a long day, and I should have expanded on my sentence. I was not a source for that particular story because I couldn't be certain, but I don't blame either uh, Mr. Bernstein or Mr. Shudo for doing whatever they did in interpreting what I said. I should have been more clear, and it certainly is a learning moment for me. But also to be clear, um, with CNN sticking by this story, you're saying now as Michael Cohen's lawyer that you don't believe your client had any direct knowledge of that the president allegedly, supposedly, ostensibly knew in advance about the Trump Tower meeting with the Russian lawyers. Is that, am I right on that? I, I, I can't, you can't. You can't. I can't tell you what Mr. Cohen has told me, except I can say to you that I'm not sure he did, and that it requires additional reporting, and I'm not sure he did not. Uh, I know that there's a lot of fuzzy memories here. There are people in and out of the room with Mr. Trump all the time. I've heard uh, somebody as maybe close to Mr. Trump or used to be as Steve Bannon say, of course he knew his son would have told him ahead of time. That's so an assumption. Th that's the key mistake. Yeah. And I take the responsibility. An assumption is not a fact. So you're coming forward and you're saying you made a mistake, and that's pretty rare in Washington. <laughs> but is there a difference you know, in the way these things get processed by the media between a mistake and a lie? So that's a really important question, Howard. When I wrote my book on the election and I saw Jim Comey through data as the decisive reason for Donald Trump being president and an illegitimate presidency if it was a result of an intervention 11 days out, by James Comey. Well, illegitimate I, is your characterization, but Yes, go ahead. illegitimate in that the data shows that after October 28th, Hillary Clinton's polls plunged. Well, there were a lot of reasons she lost, but anyway, your point about mistake and... My mistake is that when I wrote the book, I didn't use the word lie, because lie is an intentional, willful misstatement. That was not me when I talked to Anderson Cooper or when I talked to CNN. It was a mistake, but not an intentional. In this case, James Comey knew that what he told Congress, not that I will disclose something even 11 days from the election, I will take a look first. Yeah. And he's never admitted to that. And during his interviews, he never said, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. The way Donald Trump will never say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Right. The way I am saying, I am sorry. I made a mistake. Finally, you know, your critics say that, you know, you're a big uh, Hillary Clinton booster. You wrote this book about how she got screwed out of the presidency. You're a longtime friend of the former first lady. That you uh, took on Michael Cohen's case to use him against a president who you clearly dislike and to get revenge. In other words, that your representation here has a political motive. Well, there's no question that I believe Donald Trump is an extremely divisive and harmful president. And when Michael Cohen came to me, it took me quite a while to listen to him as to why he had changed his mind about Donald Trump. And I took on the representation because he was ready to speak what he felt about Donald Trump. So certainly that was part of my motive. So but what, I was also, he, what was it that he said to you, and just we have about less than half a minute, okay. that made you decide, yes, I, a long, lifelong Democrat, want to represent Donald Trump's former lawyer? Well, it's a matter of public record when he spoke to George Stephanopoulos, is your answer, is he suddenly saw Mr. Trump denouncing the intelligence community, questioning the fact that's indisputable about Russian intervention on his behalf, that I knew that his now conversion, a true transformation, was important for the country, and I would help him get those facts out. And you helped get him on Stephanopoulos. All right, Lanny Davis, not uh, an easy thing to do, difficult week for you. Thanks very much.